Hello and welcome to VLOOKUP versus XLOOKUP. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. All right, in this video, we are gonna compare VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP, and we're gonna do it in sort of a fun way. So we're gonna put them in this battle, in this main event with five rounds, and we're gonna see who's better. Now, before you watch the video, let me know below in the comments, who do you like better, VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP? Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen welcome, welcome to, to the main, main event, event of the, of the evening. evening. To, to my, my left, left wearing, wearing red, red trunks, trunks VLOOKUP. The undisputed heavyweight champion of all XL lookup functions, with a fan base so huge it's often cited as the number one most favorite lookup function in XL. In the opposite corner, wearing blue trunks, the challenger X lookup, the new kid on the block, has some impressive capabilities. Let's put them together in this main event of the evening. Let's get ready to rumble. All right, round one. Okay, in round one, we're gonna do the same thing with both functions, and then we're gonna see what happens when we insert a new worksheet column. So with VLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP, we wanna go find this, comma, in our lookup range, comma, return the value from the one, two, three, four, five, sixth column, close the function and enter. Let's try the same thing with XLOOKUP, equals XLOOKUP. We wanna go find this, comma, in here, comma, and we wanna return the value from here. Now, let's go ahead and close the function and hit enter. We get 1162. Let's see what happens when we insert a new worksheet column in between the lookup column and the return column. Insert. Now, as we can see, VLOOKUP breaks and XLOOKUP does not break. And why is this? Here, VLOOKUP is trying to find DOP 090 in table one, and it's going to return the sixth column, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now it's this empty column. Whereas with XLOOKUP, we're defining the lookup and return ranges independently, and that way it's a lot more dynamic. So things aren't gonna break when we start inserting worksheet columns. So who won round one? <laughs> XLOOKUP. Round two. Okay, in round two, we're gonna take a look at another issue, which is the match mode. By default, VLOOKUP is actually doing an approximate match. Now with XLOOKUP, by default, it's doing an exact match. Okay, so what does this even mean? So check it out. VLOOKUP is trying to find DOP 090, which it finds. So then it shoots to the right and returns 1162. XLOOKUP tries to find DOP 090, it finds it, and then it returns the value 1162. What happens when there's not an exact matching value? In fact, let's just change this to DOP 091. Now there is no DOP 091. VLOOKUP is doing an approximate match. XLOOKUP on the other hand defaults to exact match, which means if it can't find an exact match, it's going to return an error code. Okay, so by default, VLOOKUP is doing an approximate match. Okay, and the Boolean argument value for that is true. So if we don't specify it, it's going to do an approximate match. If we do specify it with true, it's gonna do an approximate match. However, we can also change this fourth argument to false, which means do an exact match. It's saying I can't find a matching value, so just return an error code. Instead of using false, we can also use zero, which is interpreted as false by Excel. Both of them are telling VLOOKUP to do an exact match, which means if you can't find an exact match, give me an error code so I know about it. XLOOKUP, on the other hand, defaults to exact match. And if we wanna change its default, what we can do is head over to this argument here called match mode. And again, by default, it's zero for exact match, but we can also change it to other approximate match values. And there are more options than there are with VLOOKUP. And you can investigate those in the Excel help files. So in other words, we can cause both functions to do an approximate match. We can cause both functions to do an exact match. The difference is their default behavior. With VLOOKUP, the default is approximate match. With XLOOKUP, the default is exact match, okay? You need to be aware of their default selection so you can change it if that's not what you're trying to do. Round three. Okay, in this round, we're gonna take a look at what happens if a value is not found. In other words, we're doing exact match, there's not an exact matching value, so how do we want to handle that error code? So what happens if we want to change what is returned? Instead of an error code, maybe we want to return something that's more friendly, right? So one option is to go into XLOOKUP and go to the next argument, if not found. We can provide a substitute option. So if there's no matching value, we want to return, and then we can pick a value. Let's say we want to return zero instead. Fine, it returns zero. 
Maybe we want to return a text string like not found. That's fine too. Maybe we just want to return a dash. That's fine too. So we get a lot of options here, but the point is this if not found argument is built into XLOOKUP, which is really convenient and it provides an easy way for us to control what is returned when an exact value is not found. However, on VLOOKUP, there is no argument for that. So what we would need to do instead is we'd need to wrap another function around it, a helper function. For example, if we wrap the if error function around it, we could say try to do VLOOKUP. If it works, great, return that value. If it doesn't work and there's an error, then return something else instead. So again, we could return a zero, that would be fine. We could return not found, that's fine. Or we could return a dash or just about anything else. XLOOKUP has a built-in argument that allows you to control what to return when an exact match is not found, whereas VLOOKUP requires a helper function, okay? So that's the difference that I wanted to talk about in round three. Round four. All right, let's write our formulas. Equals VLOOKUP, we wanna go find this, comma, in where, in here? No, because with VLOOKUP, the leftmost column needs to contain the lookup value. So it actually is going to be this range. Go find that value in there, comma, return the value from the one to the second column within that range, comma, zero for exact match. Close function and enter. We get DOP O and I know as 1081, which looks good. Let's try it with XLOOKUP equals XLOOKUP. Go find this, comma, in here, comma, return the value from here. Close function and enter. 1081, okay. Now, if we look closely at this data, what we're gonna see is that DOP 090 actually appears multiple times. What this is telling us is that both of these lookup functions start at the top, search down. Once they find a match, they return it and they don't really continue looking. They're like, I found it, here you go. Now, what happens if we're working on a workbook where we always want it to return the most recent order? In other words, the lowest one on the list. Well, with VLOOKUP, there's no arguments that provide that option. However, with XLOOKUP, there is an argument that provides that option. So we've already talked about the if not found argument. We've already talked about the match mode argument. Now let's talk about the search mode argument. By default, it's searching top to bottom, first to last. But we can change it and say search from last to first or bottom up, enter. Now we see XLOOKUP returns 699, which is right here, and we've got it. So this is great when we always wanna return the lowest or the most recent transaction from a table. Okay, round five. Now in this round, we wanna talk about returning multiple items. So let's say we wanted to return the name, sales, tax, shipping, and total for this matching value. Equals VLOOKUP, go find this, comma, in here, comma, return the value from the second column, zero for exact match, close function, enter. Okay, now we go to this one, equals VLOOKUP, go find this, comma, in here, comma, return the value from the third, zero for exact match, enter, and so on and so forth. Okay, and so that's how we do it with VLOOKUP. In other words, we'd have to write one VLOOKUP function for each column. Now let's try it with XLOOKUP, equals XLOOKUP, once again, we wanna go find this, comma, in here, comma, and we wanna return the value or values from here. Can I actually select all those columns? Yeah, enter, and now we got it. So XLOOKUP can return multiple columns for any given match. Cool, all right, so now that you've seen the video, let me know below which function you prefer, VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP. And by the way, I do these battle series videos not to say who's better, I really do them to point out their differences. And once we understand their differences, we're gonna be better equipped to apply them to the workbooks that we are working on. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my Pivot Table for Beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table, and then how to summarize those transactions with a Pivot Table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of Pivot Tables. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University.